Welcome on in everyone to this afternoon's session of Clay Share Con 2023. This is day two and we have a really great tutorial for you with Debbie from De La Design Gifts. And Debbie makes these really great cutters and stamps that you can use to make some fabulous pottery. She's worked with us here at Clay Share and turned some of my my templates into cutters. So you know my Clay Share pumpkin, she's got the cutters for that in all different sizes. So you can quickly cut out your little pumpkins. This cutter, which is one of my favorite platter cutters, this is what I made this platter with right here. Isn't that beautiful? But it made it so easy. You just roll out your clay and press your cutter in. And then these sweet little vases were some of her cutters and her little chicken stamps that I used to make these lovely little guys. And this was actually a clay share class we did. Um, so those of you who want to watch it can go find the chicken vase class and learn how to make that. But Debbie's going to show us how to hand build a vase or canister. So it's like a combo. You pick which one you make. So let's go on and see how Debbie's doing. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Jessica. Hello, everyone. How are so you today? So glad to have you here uh, again with us for Clay Share Con. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm very excited to be here again. This is my third one, I guess. Yeah, I think um, it is. Your third I'm Debbie one. Dela Cruz. I'm Debbie Dela Cruz with Daylight Design. Um, as Jess said, I make all the cookie cutters and stamps and some templates and trying to get into the tools a little bit more. So we're going to do some tools today. So here is... This is my cup tall template, and uh, we're going to use this, but we're not going to make a cup. This is the cup that it makes. It's a nice, big, tall cup. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert it and make... Can you guys see us? Because I see Jess right now, and normally I see me when I'm doing these. Do I... Everything's nope, good? they see you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Okay. You just get so to look is, at me, that's all. <laughs> all right. I don't mind that. So this is the canister I made. And as you can see, I kind of altered it a little bit. I flipped it upside down from my normal cup design. And then I made it an oval instead of the circle design. I just thought it was kind of fun. You could definitely make this still with the circle design and make a vase or canister this way. But I thought the oval was fun. Um, this one, I did an oval top and bottom, but our sample we're going to do, which I made this just yesterday, I did the oval bottom and I did a circle top. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to use the new uh, frog cutter that I have. And if you don't know what the flower frogs are, Jessica's demoed them before. And... This is one of them. This is the one I made for this. It's a smaller one and it fits on there. And then you can use this base and you can put your flowers in there and make a nice pretty little bouquet because I can't arrange flowers. So <laughs> this will hopefully help me arrange flowers. But then I also wanted it to still be a canister because how often do you have flowers? I don't have them around very often. So when it's not being used as a vase, it can be this cute little canister and still be sitting out. So we're going to do that today. Um, you can make any kind of lid. I thought this was a fun one. Um, I used a couple of my cutters making this. And the bottom on this is actually the... I have a set of oval cutters. You can, you don't have to have the cutters. You can kind of do this on your own. But if you have the cutters, it makes things quicker and easier. Uh, this is a set that also matches the mug wide. And uh, we're only using this. We're not using the top because we did the round top. So let's start with the lid because we want this to dome and have time to set up. So let's do that first. So I have already compressed my clay. I've got a piece here. I did all that beforehand because we're probably gonna move kind of quick. 
Um, I've got, let me move that a little bit. I know just or Kevin has overhead, but here is um, this view also, if that's good. So I use my four inch eight scallop cutter. You can use anything for this. And you can yeah. stamp it beforehand. That's kind of what I did on these. I just did some stamps around the edge. A lot of times when I'm stamping and I want to kind of go off the edge there, I'll cut my piece closer to the size I want. And I'll just kind of indent my clay so that I know where that's going to go. And then I'll go ahead and stamp. I don't use anything really when my clay is very, very soft. I might use some cornstarch, but it it really doesn't need it all the time. Just kind of depends on where you're at with your clay. Um, so test out a little bit when you first start doing something before you stamp your piece. I recommend stamping to the side a little bit. And you could easily do this with the rolling pins, but I wanted to kind of show the stamps. I kind of rock a little bit when I do the stamps and you'll see like this one's not as deep as this one. It's really easy to go back in there and kind of find that spot again and stamp a little harder if you need to. So now we're gonna cut that out. And on this one, you can round it a lot of different ways. I'm going to use my Garrity tool. And I'm going to use my piece of foam. And now we've got that nice rounded top, but we're going to set that aside because we don't want to really mess with it too much yet because it's still just a little bit pliable. So let's set that aside. And then let's uh, make the frog cutter or use the frog cutter. So this is a brand new tool that I just came out with. It's a lot of fun. I think people are really going to love this. People have been buying it like crazy. <laughs> So it's so, up on the okay. site now. They can go get it. Very thankful for that. Thank you, everyone. Um, so it's a two-piece because with the holes being so close together, even using plastic wrap, there's just nowhere for that clay to go. So I made it taller than my normal cutters, and I made this press that will press the clay out. You can use cling wrap still. You don't have to. I'm not going to because... I realized this was my very last piece of cling wrap today and I didn't have time to get more. <laughs> We're gonna use that for something else if we have time. So I'm not gonna use the cling wrap. I didn't stamp my flower before, but I think we could do that. Let's put a few stamps on it. And actually let's just use the rolling pin or the little texture roller that matches it. Let's just go across there. So what you want to do on this is you're going to put this on first before you press it. Then you'll you'll find your spot there. Make sure I'm in the frame here. You're just gonna do like you normally would. It does take a little more pressure pushing these because, like I said, there's nowhere for that clay to go because the holes are close together and they need to be close together to fit the mason jars. There's two sizes. This bigger one is spread out a little bit more, but it's still fairly tight. So if you need to, and you have trouble with your hands, like some people do, you can use your rolling pin to make sure that you've pressed good on that which I think I had that fine, but just a tip for people that if they need it. So now we can pull this out. And like you can see, all we have to do now is press on that press plate. 
and we didn't warp it or anything. And then we pull that off and we've got a perfect little frog with all the holes already done. So let's move this aside. And here's my clay for the canister. And again, I've already compressed, it's all ready to go. A few things out of my way. And it's hard for me to remember because I'm used to doing it the right way for a cup. And I have to remember to do upside down. So we're going this way for me. Turn my clay the other way. Have a little more room. And what I like to do with the cutters is I'll make that mark again and kind of give myself an idea of where I want my design to go. And if you're doing a rolling pin and doing the whole thing, you don't need that. Or if you want to do half of it, it's great to have that. Um, you can also put it on here and kind of plan your stamps, plan what you're doing, plan your design. So we're going to We have this line here, and I'm going to follow it with my rolling pin. So I'm kind of just walking it. And these work great with just as many rollers, too. I'll show you one I did in just a little bit. So we've got that. I can still see my indentation a little bit. I did the Sum Bunny stamp on the sample one. I think I'm just going to do flowers on this one because I want it for my bathroom. So I'm just going to do these bigger flowers that match the roller. Other questions, Jess? Folks were just asking where they can get everything, and I told them where they could find your products. The awesome. flower frogs are available now. Thank so you, you, they are. Can, yes. So they can go there and right. get them. And uh, nice. folks, that, some folks are tuning in a little later and are asking what size the cutters are. Okay. So this is my cup tall cutter on my website and I will give you the dimensions because you don't have to have cutters. You can make your own. You could probably do this with a rectangle also. But this dimension is just a little under six inches. And um, the diameter on the bottom of this before it's fired is a three inch if that helps. So this dimension here is about nine and a quarter. And that's about 12 and a quarter. So I've got a design here I like. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. I definitely let my clay get a little stiff getting ready for this today because <laughs> I was, you know, anxious. <laughs> oh, you got this. You know what you're doing. So, and you know, Jessica's kind of the expert on, on teaching this hand building. So uh, if you need more steps for building the cup, it's it's just like building a cup. So watch her videos because I'm going to kind of just go through that part of it quickly. So let's see. I thought I had all my tools out, but I might be missing something. Well, let's just cut the edge manually. I have one of those great little 45 degree cutters that I love to use because it's so quick and easy. I love these studio bats for building on. Oh, 
We're gonna slip and store. And now we're basically just building a cup just the way we normally would build a hand-built cup. I think this design would be really cute too with an overlap in the buttons like you've done before. Oh yeah. Wouldn't that, that be would adorable be for cute. a little canister vase? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would I'm be really, really sweet. Definitely gonna have to mix them that way. So I'll try and turn it a little bit, but. Try and smooth that seam a little bit on the inside here. I'll probably try and hurry through a little bit of it today so that we can get to everything. And if anyone has questions, we can do that. You're doing good. You still got 21 minutes. So, okay, great. Uh, everything on the website is 15% off right now. It's automatic. You don't have to do anything, it won't show up until you're in the cart. So if you see stuff and you're thinking like, oh, I thought it was on sale and it's not, once you go to the card is where, where you'll see it. So we're gonna leave the top round and I have a rounder and you can use a flower pot for this or whatever. I just didn't have one the right size, but I do have these rounders that I sell. And what's nice about it is that it goes a lot smaller than your flower pots it go. Does. So that's kind yeah. of it has why nice I made paper. it. <laughs> and it that, has that a great angle too. It. Yeah. Because it exactly. has that it's sharper a, angle. It's much better. It does a little more multi-purpose. The, the flower pots are great and they're cheap, obviously. Um, so they they do work well if you don't but they have are that. heavy. And they're heavier, yeah. <laughs> And Which can be a bad thing sometimes. You're not putting so much weight down on your on your pot like you would with a flower pot. So we've got that top round. Now our bottom is going to be this oval. So let me cut my oval first. I probably should have done that first. And then, oh, that's actually the wrong piece of clay. Let me redo that real quick. I had a thicker piece of clay for something else if we got to it. So, and now, of course, is a good time to do your maker's mark if you have one. I also really like doing like kind of a matching element on the bottom. I like kind of going off the edge a little bit, just kind of make it a little bit nice and finished looking on the bottom. So there's our bottom. We're going to go ahead and slip and score that. I will bid in Sika. Very excited. Are you gonna about. have a booth? You gonna have a booth in Sika this year? <gasps> I am. So exciting! Yeah, it, I wasn't going to. I thought it was maybe a little more than we could handle, but it kind of just you know why not? Let's just do it. Yeah, like you yeah. know, jump in the lake. So, so we're doing it. So I'm I'm excited about it. Now we've been crazy getting ready. So it's it's been a little bit crazy between ClayCon <laughs> West, Clay ClayShareCon, and Enseca, so close in a row. So one it thing all I also this time of year, oh, so close together. One thing I kind of like to do here is kind of get my shape with my cutter, and I'll just kind of put it on there. Now that's your oval. Of... What size cutter is that one? So this oval is. It's about, it looks like it's right at four inches one way and four and three quarters the other way, or pretty close to that. 
And you could shape the bottom kind of how you like. And I know Jess has taught this in classes. Place this on your, your clay and then cut around it if you don't have an oval that's going to work. So we've got that oval kind of how we want it. So let's just go ahead and attach that. A bunch of people are going to be out in Sika and they can't wait to see you there. I'm excited to see everybody and meet people. So please come up and say hi. Come find me at the Very booth. My exciting. sister I'm... will be working the booth and my daughter. Wow. The first I thought I'm not going to be there this year. I, so you know, maybe if you... I will be able to mingle. <laughs> yeah. Having yeah. Them, and if in, having two in Sika goes well. Yeah. You'll get to go next year, and I'll see you then at 2024. I absolutely in Virginia, yeah. And I'm hoping I'll be able to vend again at that one. It'll be a oh, little I further so for too. me. So I think I got my shape just so I was kind of hurrying. So it looks like I didn't stretch the bottom quite as much, but it's close. So folks want to know what uh, tabletop surface are you working on? What's that? Your tabletop surface. They're intrigued by it. They want oh, to know what you're you know, working on. I, so I have this great big giant table that I found at a Habitat for Humanity for five bucks. But oh. it had a laminate surface, but it was a great table. It's super sturdy. Um, so I went and just got a piece of birch that it was expensive. I think I spent like almost a hundred dollars on the, the piece of birch, but it fits the entire thing. So there's no seams, no, cause I used to just use boards on top of it. And that didn't always work so well because the dust and the dirt would kind of fall off the board and they'd, I'd have to constantly move them. So I spent the money on the big, I figure with a $5 table, buying a hundred dollar piece of board to go on the top, but it's just birch and it's unfinished. It's real thick and it's just kind of clamped onto the top and it's a great surface. Yeah, it is. So we've got our oval bottom. We've got our little canister here. So we know now that we've got our, we'll clean this up a little bit. We've got our frog that can fit on top when we have flowers. And when we don't have flowers, let's finish our canister. So what I did for my canister, I made a real tall galley on this one because I had such a dome lid. If I had a flat lid, you could just have like a, a flatter galley. But what, I think that's what they're called. <laughs> Is that right, Jess? The it's gallery. A gallery. The gallery. A gallery. A gallery. Okay. So what I did on this one. Or flange, if you prefer. What's that? So, or flanged. I think technically the yeah. gallery is when it's attached to the inside. I think the, the gallery the is bay. the inside, and right? The and the outside is when one. It's separate. That, yeah. That when sounds it's better. In. Yeah, it's the flange. So on this one, I just took my my ruler here and I just cut myself a strip the width of my ruler. You could go any depth I think you wanted. I don't like the deep flange because you don't have to worry about lids sliding off. You know, they. Yeah, I thought it, and I, I kind of like the look of it. I think it kind of has a yeah. kind of a neat little look. What I did here, I have this little, uh, I believe this is a two inch. And I believe that if you have my um, magic shaker set, it comes with a two inch. And it was a pretty good size for doing my galley or my, my flange. So I just took it and kind of just used it as a guide. I should have probably rolled that a little bit thinner. It's pretty thick clay. 
And I'm using dark star clay. It's very forgiving for hand building, but it is speckled, but it's, I love it. Did not cut that very well at all. But that's how I made my fl my flange, just by wrapping it around the blade of this cutter. And that way I knew I was getting a nice round shape. Pop that off of there now. And we'll set that. So basically that's just gonna go right in there once we get to that stage. Now for my knob, you can make any kind of knob and um, Jessica also has a lot of great classes on that. <laughs> but I just use the little one that is also part of the Magic Shaker set. And I just made my round little top here. I stamped my itty bitty flower on it. I kind of rounded those edges a little bit. And then I just did a ball of clay. My clay might be a little too stiff for this, but I won't attach this since the clay is kind of stiff. I'll, I'll get a fresh piece out later. But I did the ball of clay, put that on, and then just kind of wrapped that and kind of formed it down a little bit. And you'll see there's the results of the one that, that I did. But it's you can make any knob. kind of knob. That was just kind of a fun one. Um, I wanted to show also, I would mentioned doing Jess's roller. This... I made the other night using this. It's easier when you're walking it like I did along the cutter. It's easier to take them off the, the metal, at least for me anyway. Oh, I but, don't use them with the handles. I take them off. The handles yeah, are basically how, just like, I mean, some people like them, but mostly I just walk it on. Yeah, it's just easier for me. I'm used to it. But how cute is the reindeers? With, no. And this is basically kind of built opposite. This is the mug wide template. I still did the round bottom and the oval top. And this is the cutter, the lid. And I put reindeer snacks on it. Oh, for the reindeer. Very cute. And of course, I'm going to fill it with M&Ms. But <laughs> yeah, that's right. Reindeer need M&Ms. But, you know, <laughs> it'll be cute. So I wanted to show that, too. And then also I wanted to show with the um, the frogs, the frog cutter. So you can get, I've got four different ones here. This is the one we used. And you'll see I still have clay in there. But it's super easy to just kind of, the end of your needle tool, just kind of pop those out real quick. And it, doesn't take any time at all. And now we're making a mess everywhere. But this is this is the smaller size. It's a six petal. Um, it should fit on a regular mason jar, depending on your clay shrinkage. But I I believe it should fit without any problem. You can the also regular buy mouth, not the wide. Yeah, and then the bigger one is an eight scallop. It's got variable uh, holes. So they're a little bit different size. They're a little bit further apart and that should fit on the white bottom. And then both of them are also available just as the holes only. So if you don't want to do the outer and you want your own outer, you can buy just the holes only. And they do still come with a press. They just have a smaller 
circle press that they come with. Otherwise, you can't get. It's the, so the, handy the, that you have a cutter out. just for the holes because in yeah, my well, flower in in my flower frog class, that was the heart that you know you're cutting your holes. And right. You don't get and them using space to because we're human. The shape and, right. Yeah. Right. And you're holding it in your hand and you're trying not to bend it and you don't want to wait till it's too right. dry. This way, you just and you want boom, you want them them space nicely. And this is yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Quickly. So I, I sometimes I'll could, look at one that I did and I'm like, whoa, whoa, what was, what I, was I thinking? I thinking? <laughs> you know, I wasn't drinking, I but, know for sure, but wow. Right. I think so. I also use this little one and I made this cute little yes. soap dish. And this is with uh, one of one of the GR Pottery Forms cuties because my other cute. soap dishes are bigger and they don't work with the cuties, but this will work with the cuties. I also have one other new product right now, and it is just these holes. And they're also a little bit smaller, so they'll work with the smaller rect or the smaller uh, rectangles and squares. And they work with this is the cutie uh, oval. So works cute, with that. It's so cute. Just it's to kind of show you the them. size. Of course, this is already fired, but this is uh, the the one I've had for a while with the slots and the rectangle, the scalped rectangle. So. That I think is super fun. I think people will be excited about making smaller ones. I will at some point actually make with the the outer and the inner so you can do it kind of all at once. But I think just with these small ones, I don't think you have to have that. I think just having the inners, I think will go quick and easy. I think these will also work well for like berry bowls and luminaries and even if you have like a wheel thrown piece and it doesn't you know go around the edge I think you could at least mark it and you know get your spacing good so I'm excited about all the different possibilities that these will present they're super duper cute uh, we had a question someone wants to know the difference between your stamps and your stencil oh that's a good question um let me grab one so the stencils are bigger um, because sometimes people ask for bigger stamps and we can do that. We can make them pretty much any size, but they're hard to use when they get big. So once they get to be about six inches, it's a stencil. And I just realized I haven't cleaned this one up yet. So they're thin. So you would take it and you would, I don't have clay soft enough here but you would put it on your clay and you would use a rolling pin and you would roll it into your clay. And then once you take it out, you've got that design. You can kind of see a little bit of it. And you would, they all come with cutters that match that you can or can't, you don't have to use the cutter, but you can. Um, the other thing is I've done a little bit of, with the B one, I have done where I, I've put it in and I've uh, underglazed the areas and then pulled it out. And that does work. This is a little bit thicker than regular stencil material. They're super sturdy though. Um, so that's the difference in the stencils. It's just the fact that they're bigger and the stamps just don't work as well that, that size. So you would wanna actually roll it into your clay. So anything else then? So that was the main one. A lot of folks were asking for the various sizes now of everything that you've been using. Okay. I used this. I used the smaller one, which is the three and a half inch, I believe. Um, then I used my flower roller and the stamp set that kind of matches it. I don't remember what it's called, but there's only one size on that. And then this base is the cup tall and I gave the measurements for that. It uses the oval lid set, just the, and you can buy them separate. You can buy the whole set, which would be the smaller pieces. And that would be for making this type of lid. That's basically what this does is makes a, a lid that way. 
So we use just, you can buy the set or you can buy them individually. We use just the largest on that. Um, we use just the two inch to make our flower flange. I used a eight inch, or sorry, this is a four inch circle or scalloped, eight scallop that we use for that. And it, it makes a pretty decent size. You could vary on that. You could kind of go bigger or not. Um, what else did we use then? Um, I'll show you a little bit difference than this. Figure out what I did with. This is that canister I showed at the beginning that is made out of the cup tall. This is one made out of the mug wide. So you'll kind of see the two differences. They both use the same bottom and just a short one. I think this is going to be perfect for like Q-tips in the bathroom. So I have a cat that likes to steal my Q-tips. So I need one with the lid. <laughs> I think it'll be perfect for that. And then I don't know, that could even be a cute toothbrush holder or something. So oh, it would be. Uh, or paintbrushes that. in the studio or. A paint, yeah, I think it's good, you know, a lot of different uses. And then like these, this is the cutie size. Um, we have a scallop cutie uh, cutter that I used for that. I believe I used this one, which is a five inch. Mm -hmm. it looks about and right. Then, and then this is my tray design that I used, which is, I think it's also called Ornate Oval on the website. Um, Again, this reindeer snacks, it's basically the same as this one, but I did it this way instead of that way. So kind of multiple uses. I try to make multiple uses for, or figure out once I've figured out a template, then like, okay, now what else can we do with it besides just what it's made for? So, so many possibilities. That, that helps. And and you also offer a mystery box too that people can get. We just started that. This is our second month. And this month's theme is summer and it's summer travel and or vacation, I guess. Um, I'll give you a little bit of like a hint. There's some mountains in there. There's some city. <laughs> there's some amusement park. There's some beach. There's kind of, there's some desert. There's a little bit for everyone in that one. So that's the March box and it's available now and we ship them out March 1st. We'll start shipping them. That way everyone kind of gets it at the same time. And that way no one spoils the fun for, for everyone else. Uh, it kind of gives a little bit more information about on the website about what's in them. There's three different levels. There's a basic, a deluxe, and this one has a premium box. Um, I can tell you the basic oh, box great. has a small roller similar to this one and the deluxe box has two small rollers all right uh, so it's totally worth it to get the mystery box though because you get an assortment just, you know, of textures and things yeah, that you can use and it, to make and it all coordinates and, together it coordinates so everything's and you can still buy past boxes um the february box is still available and you can use the 15 percent off on that the March box, awesome. you can't use the additional code, but it's actually a, about 30% off is what it is if you buy wow. it before the deadline of when we ship. So great. So we're out of time. Debbie, what a great little demo. I loved all Thank the things you so you made. much. Super lots cute. Of lots, of, lots of fun things. As always, it's a pleasure to have you here joining us for Clay Share Con. You take Thank care you. and be well. And everybody out there, check out Debbie's website. Stayla Design Gifts.com. And she has an automatic 15% off right now. You just get what you want, put it in the cart, and 15% off is going to show up there. But she has so many great products, so many things to help you make your pottery projects better and easier. I know it helps me a lot with my own projects. So check her out, please. And you can find her on Instagram, but it's not under Dayla Design Gifts. It's under Debbie Delacruz. You have it under your name, right, Debbie? Yeah, it's under her name. So. So our Instagram is Debbie underscore Delacruz. She's still in my ear. You can't see her, but I got, it's like a little angel on my shoulder. I get to hear her.
So, all right, everyone, thank you so much for being here with us for this great tutorial. We're going to take a little break and we're going to be back with Ying Zhu and San Bao Studios, and she's going to show you how to make a thrown pasta bowl, and then she's going to do decorations. If you saw her tutorial last year, you know what's coming. She's amazing. She's a master at surface decoration. So she's going to be joining us next, and you're not going to want to miss that. And that's going to be at 